Along with the new Operation Dustline DLC coming May 12th will be a massive fucking patch. This thing's like 4.6 goddamn gigabytes. So uh, there's a lot of changes to. Let's start off. Let's go down the list for balancing operators. You got IQ's gadget is now enhanced with visual feedback. They changed the IQ device to display the environment and electronic devices you can now see through the screen and there will be an outline of detected devices and it's also increasing the distance range of the of her gadget to 20 meters. People were saying they think it was originally 15 meters so it's a nice little buff. Tachanka's LMG is easier to place now and easier to use. Essentially, you can put it in closer and tighter spots and behind objectives, little objects a little bit easier, and you get on and off of it quicker, but they still think it's not going to be enough because they go on to say this is the first step for Tachanka at tweaks as we will continue to monitor and improve him. So one of many to come. <laughs> and meanwhile, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have Montang getting a real buff. Montang shields add side protection now. So the extent to this, I'm not really sure. But this sounds like it's going to be fucking amazing. And so this is what a real buff looks like. And that Chanko one is just a joke. So keep that in mind. You've got Frost no longer has a Nitro Cell. This is a buff to a nerf to Frost and a buff to a lot of the other operators. This might make her go down slightly below Smoke as far as ratings, as far as the best defensive operator. Uh, as is now, Frost is you know top tier. Whenever I kill her, I'm like, I killed their best player. Let alone if that guy actually is the best player. I just know Frost is so good that she's a threat no matter what. And so Frost will be getting barbed wire instead which actually fits the traps more because it'll blend in a little bit more and make them a little bit harder to see if you're not paying attention uh, it might reveal them a little bit more as the meta will change so this could be a win-lose either way her losing in the nitro cell though fits and yeah it kind of nerfs her and so this is actually good uh bucks grenade he gets grenades and reduced recoil on his primary gun but he loses some range on his shotgun so this is, eh, he loses breaching charges, which makes sense. He gets grenades, which kind of doesn't make sense, as you'll see in a little bit. But there was really nothing else to give him, I think. <laughs> and so, and they reduced the recoil on his gun, because, yeah, the gun had a little bit too much kick. So that makes sense, because they want his right bumper, his main ability, to be a little bit more tactical. So they're making it a little less lethal. But what confuses me is they go on to say we have slightly reduced the underslung shotgun's effective range by 2 meters. So it fits more of a tool than a clear-cut offensive weapon. So you mean you want it to be more like another thing in the game that would go through a wall and kind of clear it open and it kind of looks like a sledgehammer and it... Wait, oh. So yeah, I'm really confused because if they want to make a character that can go through walls tactically, there already is a guy... So, I'm just kind of, like, if they keep going down this route, they're kind of just making a second sledge. Now, like, don't get me wrong, I really love Buck being able to blast a hole in the wall and shoot through it. But they're kind of making a more blast a hole in the wall, jump through it. Because it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of in between. I guess that makes them useful. I'm just saying it's a little, it's it's it went towards sledge, which is just a little weird. Uh, Thatcher's EMP grenade gets a slight nerf. The range The range that it goes that it'll destroy stuff was originally seven meters now it's going down to 5.2 little sad but it's needed uh sledge swaps breaching charges for stun grenades nobody uses bre nobody uses breaching charges they essentially said so this makes a ton of sense and actually makes sledge even more tactical with the nerd with the buff coming to stun grenades i'll talk about in a little bit thermite swaps frag grenades for stun grenades this made thermite was a full all-around character. He can go through fucking reinforced walls, he can throw overpowered grenades, and he, you can put ACOG on his gun, which has low recoil. So it made him pretty much a god character. Taking out the frags nerfs him a little bit, and since he's a must-play character, it just makes sense that he doesn't have frags because this just increases the spam of frags. The FBI SWAT recruit shield loadout now has heavy armor instead of middle armor because he was too fast with that shield and everything, and people were exploiting it in ESL, and he was overpowered. So, once again, this is why I go back to my old model. This is why glitchers, hackers, and pro players need to be testing your game in development and not fucking scrubs. Because this shit would never make it in a real game with real playtesters. People would go, hey, you see this guy? This guy's overpowered. And if you couple it with this, with this ability on this character, it makes him super OP. And this is what happened. You take Riot Shield, which is our, which are corny, and then you mix it with a speed boost, which makes him double cornball. So 
this was just inevitable and just shows once again how lazy developers are when it comes to testing or how lazy publishers are, how cheap they are in, in actually having real testing done. Gadget and attachments balancing for introduction or for introducing gadget placement and cancellation controls. So this one was a little confusing. Essentially, uh, they're going to have a new flow for placing gadgets. Instead of holding down the key or button and letting you let it go where you were aiming it, uh, ready in place with the gadget, you can now press it to take it out, take out the gadget, and then you hold it down to put it on the wall. So this feature will need to be turned on in the options menu, but it's a little bit of a change. So what we'll though, NC, I'll have to turn it on test it. I mean, once again, this is Rainbow Six. It's a little clunky at times. So to see exactly how this helps and hurts is... <laughs> It's definitely going to be one thing that needs to be tested. Uh, the red dot sight and reflex triangles are now more precise, basically buffing up the sights to add a little bit more diversity. So once again, we'll have to test and see if they're actually really buffed or they're just slight. They change the resolution on the triangle to make them a little bit cooler looking and a little bit more accurate. <laughs> we'll see. The flash hider and compensation get a little bit more buffs to make them a little bit more unique. So they actually went more like the battlefield approach. They make the flash hider give you a little bit more... Uh, centers the gun and reduces the first shot recoil, making it do more than just hide your flash. And meanwhile, the compensator gets a little bit of a nerf to put a cap on the maximum recoil, and this allows for fully automatic guns to have a little bit more recoil, or as they put it, fire more potent, and stun grenades will now detonate faster on contact, which makes them explode, or you know, do the flash effect, effect one second after making content, opposed to the three seconds, thus making them actually useful. So we'll see how over if they become overpowered now, and they need to change the time to two seconds, or if they're actually useful now, but not super overpowered. So this is really a debatable thing. Flashbangs and like COD are annoying as fuck, but in a game where it's a tactical shooter, it makes sense that they're even in the game. So we'll see if they fall into the place where ride shields shouldn't be in games because they're fucking annoying and they're just bullshit. Are flashbangs under the same umbrella or do they actually serve a use and purpose? So we'll see. And then um, I, I, someone, if someone makes this fun of the video, does fucking Jaeger blast those out of the air? As I can't remember, but I think he does actually. So this will make Jaeger almost a must play if flashbangs are really good. So. That'll be interesting for the dynamic of the game, which will make Thatcher more of a must-play character. But then they nerf Thatcher a little bit, so that'll be... <laughs> so it's just like rock, paper, scissors, man. Big time. Uh, Pump-action shotguns are getting a little bit of a buff. Uh, this might be a little annoying. They're just basically changing each one tier. Each tier of shotgun gets a little bit of a buff, essentially. They'll do more damage over a little bit more of range. So this could be fucking annoying. So keep an eye on that. Uh, they're fixing some aiming dead zone stuff. They're doing uh, no more penalty points for destroying your own gadget. Uh, you're still probably going to get penalty points for destroying your team's gadgets, though. <laughs> uh, they're doing edit playlists for custom games. You can now skip the boot sequence when you're pressing any button. So essentially, when you're loading up the game, apparently you can skip the boot sequence. So this will be fucking awesome. We'll see. I'm just a little blown away. Apparently, PC people could just do it by going to the game files and removing it. <laughs> oh, you PC people hacking everything in your own games. That's fucking awesome, though. But that was cool to see that they did that. Uh, there's some ranked stuff, too, that they go and do and change, but I don't play ranked, so you're going to either have to read it or find someone that knows what they're talking about. I don't want to sit here and misguide you and mislead you. So I'm going to move on to positioning and perspective representation improvements. So it was a big thing in the community where people were finally showing off that the eye level doesn't match up with your character and it's a little bit lower. And they were showing off the, you could see someone and they won't be able to see you based on the positioning of each character. And then, you know, like add in the fact that you can be upside down in a window and shit like that. And it's just all that little different camera tweaks and twerks and shit like that made for a game where it was... The reason why you would put that the way it is, your eyesight a little bit lower, is to like help out with lag compensation a little bit and make it way more fair. Well, in a tactical shooter where every fucking centimeter matters, it kind of counterbalances it. So essentially, they need better servers and they need to make the eyesight a little bit more appropriate. So this is the first step into making the eyesight more appropriate. Now, will they get better servers? I doubt it. So this. It's still kind of on the bad side, especially with Peekers Advantage. All this is going to do is help. This is going to counteract the old Peekers Advantage they were trying to cut down on. Uh, uh, quote me now. Watch. We'll see what Battle Nonsense, if he does any coverage on it. Um, we'll see. But that, that's from my perspective. At least, unless I'm an idiot, but I'm pretty sure that's how that's going to play out. 
Uh, they also do something with the animations when leaning, since I learned uh, all ra all operators are right-handed, and they're just going to make the uh, match animations when you peek left or peek right. I didn't even fucking notice that there was a difference. They're going to also make it so that when you look outside and you're indoors, it doesn't look like the goddamn sun's right there. So that's fucking massive. So <laughs> took them long enough, but, you know, that, sh that meme was so funny when people were saying it. They're doing some graphic updates, just like little mini changing of lighting and shit like that for like when you're killed and you're low on health and shit like that. So, and they're also going to be buffing up some sound stuff. They added a gun oculation to make sound, make the sound of the guns more realistic and then it also is going to help you tell a little bit more about where the guns are. So, this ought to be good, but then again this audio is really fucking this game. I know why it's fucky because they want to be realistic, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see how much of a change this is going to be. Uh, they added a lot more destruction. It's going to be like we're playing Battlefield, guys. You can now destroy cars, windows. They're breakable now. So, division eats your heart out. <laughs> That's the game where you can pop tires and break glass. And in case you uh, They're doing some more uh, Code of Conduct stuff. Uh, that deserves another fucking rant. They're doing PvE improvements. <laughs> Who the fuck plays PvE? In case you were wondering, they're just nerfing friendly fire damage so that you hurt your teammates even less. They're adding charms into the game. You can put those on your gun and they're little charms. I guess they'll hang down off the gun or something? I'm still really confused on what the fuck they are. One of them's a fucking unicorn, so that's really dumb. They're adding headgear. It's a slight turn to Call of Duty style where you can fucking make your character look goofy and shit. We'll see what people say. Uh, I'll have to see it in game. I don't really know yet. They're adding uh, more weapon skins based on the DLC, Dustline style. Uh, they're adding the, the winning team showcase, just like Call of Duty. To, it'll be the team instead of the best players, but still, you know, it's just a winner circle type thing that all games are doing now. For some odd reason, they think that's the end thing. They're adding the operators, the new map. And then two, last thing, two little tweaks that they're adding for bug fixes, like a laundry list. They're doing the, if you breach into a room and you land on a frost trap as you're swinging in and insta killed you well they're changing that you're just gonna go down that was a glitch apparently and then the biggest thing is they fix blitz's head placement because it was misaligned with his shield now this is why one i hate shields in game and two this is why developers are fucking trash it took them what what six months now to finally fix blitz overpowered head glitching self because we all noticed that the, there was blood coming out of his head, but it never showed anything. Apparently, that was a glitch. That wasn't poor hit, hit code, net code, hit registration, everything. It was just bullshit, lazy developers that, that either didn't know it or didn't fucking care. It wasn't a priority. This is why shields in the game shouldn't be in a goddamn game unless it's perfect. And this is why shit like this needs to be tested to the highest degree. Because shit like this is fucking overpowered and corny and it's like very hard to counter a goddamn shield person. Either you have to have a pizza or you run up and knife them and all the other bullshit. So this is just my final gripe is why the fuck did it take so long? And like I said, if this was a minor thing, this wouldn't even be in the patch notes. They would have fixed it slightly and we would have never noticed. But the fact that it is in the patch notes means it was some type of issue and they knew it was a big enough of issue that they had to put it in here. But this has been Gangster7. Thanks for watching. Peace out.